October can be a very soggy month in New Brunswick, which made working on the outside of my cabin a tad inconvenient. Even the locals were looking a little ruffled in the rain. It also reminded me that I need to get some preservative on my deck soon. Well, I could sit and watch a storm forever, but unfortunately, I got work to do. Now this is the part I've been waiting for. The fun part of working on this cabin. Not that the rest has been really that bad. It hasn't hit, it, it has had its fun moments. But this is the one I've been waiting for because I don't no longer have to deal with code. I'm dealing with design. And that's something that can go anywhere. Now, um, I've already experimented here with putting the old wood on this side, and I absolutely love it. This is exactly what I was looking for. This is what I've got actually right here for this end only, and I'm trying to make it work. In this corner, I use like lighter wood that I'd found, and uh, now I've got a mix, and this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge because there's light wood, and there's dark wood, and there's weathered wood, uh, the height there is about 88 inches, and I need a board about 26 inches wide, which I think, yeah, about that size. So when I put this all down on the floor, just to see what I've got, um, it's 62, so I need another uh, 26 inches. Is, that, is my math right? I guess, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, and I don't have it, but the good thing is some of these boards are, you know, like this one's 50, 57. There's at least a few of them I can cut in half and uh, make two pieces instead of one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm start going to start cutting all of these to 26 inches, put them out, see what looks best, and hammer them up. Well, I've got the boards all cut, ready to go up there, but in trying to put them in a logical progression, it's just not working out right because I've got these beautiful old weathered boards and then I've got these newer ones and uh, it's kind of clashes, you know? <laughs> it's only a visual thing, but hey, that's what it's all about. I want it to look good on the wall. Now, rather than just make all the old boards look new again so everything matches, I think what I have to do is make the new boards look old. And that's not that difficult a thing to do. As a matter of fact, it's really, really incredibly easy. And when you see the difference, you probably wouldn't even know they weren't old boards. But the way to do it is if you take boards like this and you grab some vinegar, and this is so easy, steel wool. You just put them together and just let it sit for a day and you end up with a jar like this. And I'll just sort of show you and just mix it up every once in a while. And if you want to add a little bit of color, what I found is if you just throw in a tea bag, that helps as well. But uh, all you have to do is just coat it on. At first, it really doesn't look like much. You can sort of see it starting to take there a little bit but give it a while let it dry and you'll be amazed at what it looks like so i took all the lighter colored boards and uh, coated them with that stain let it sit for an hour and a half and look there's no more light colored boards. They're just various shades of brown and gray, which is exactly what I want. It would be hard to tell which were the lighter ones, the newish wood, and, and which is the older wood, except for the fact that there's texture on these. But if you, if you forgot, let me show you. I'm just gonna put this one over, and you can see that's what it looked like. And this is what it looks like now. It's a really good stain 
vinegar and steel wool, a little tea, and the vinegar is actually really good for the wood. If there's any hint of black mold, um, that kills it. There is one note of caution that I have to make sure everybody understands. I didn't just take this wood and put it on the wall. I treated it first. And the big concern, and this is really, really big, is black mold. Now, I know for a fact that some of the wood that I had did have black mold. The way to treat it, or the way I treated it, is with vinegar. What I did is I made sure it was completely dry and then sprayed it with vinegar. Just use like a little sprayer like this. Go right across any areas that are infected with black mold. Let that dry and then you take a wire brush and you brush it down. So vinegar is actually really good for the wood. And as far as the stain goes, the price of a little vinegar and steel wool, it's like almost free. Look what you get. You can rough some of these up, like these smoother ones. You can beat the hell out of it or verbally abuse it. Whatever you want to do, make it look like these rougher ones. But, you know, I think once they get it up in the wall, nobody's going to notice the difference. Just don't tell them. To separate the entrance from the rest of the cabin, I wanted a thicker board that looked like a support beam. A nice neighbor even donated some old style nails to give it that pioneer look. Now one thing I didn't film was installing the insulation. It was just too boring. There we go. The wall is up. And I think it looks pretty good. I put a like a fake beam on the top. It's really just a 2x6 weathered one. And I tried to stagger the pattern. I didn't want it all one or the other. I tried to mix it up and not make it too perfect. You don't want it to be perfect. It, uh, you know, I've left a few gaps here and there. Um, I think it looks like it belongs here, and that's the important thing. Um, I've got a lot more to do with it, but I think it's a good basis uh, for this particular area. It's rustic, but yeah, I still have to work on the door. I'm getting there, but I'm kind of pleased with it. Every once in a while, there were a few breaks in the clouds to let the sun shine in. Now here's something I forgot to even mention. Somebody suggested I should get a trail camera and just see what animals are around when I'm not. And so I took their advice and I bought a little inexpensive one here that does both stills and videos. You uh, strap it to a tree and if something goes by, it's got a motion detector. If something goes by in the middle of the night or where you're not here, it'll take its picture. Uh, set it up on the lower lawn, you know, near where my fire pit is. And the first time I used it, I got a picture of Prudence, of course, because Prudence likes to go down here. But when I set it up a few days later, and uh, it was at night, it's amazing what the camera captured. At first was a tiny pair of ears, and then the big eye.
Initially, it looked like it was only two raccoons, but then the third little one appeared from the bushes. I think they were after the deer corn I had left for prudence. Next, I put up the camera near the laneway and caught this scruffy porcupine wandering down the road. Just after it looks at the camera and exits the screen, another creature appears. Watch for the sparkle of an eye to the right of the center. There it goes. For those interested in trying this, the camera was made by TwoGuard and I included a link in the video description. So my next step is this wall here, which I call the wood stove wall. Why? <laughs> because it's got the wood stove in front of it. And you've probably seen this in the past and you might notice it's looking a little bit better. It's got brand new uh, stove pipe on it. It is actually hooked up. Theoretically, I could put it on right now, but I'm not. I want to put it. I, I want to start it off for the very first time on a special occasion. It's not cold enough now, but it will be soon. So look out for that. The big fire up of the wood stove. But for now, doing this wall. I've taken my old weathered board and I put it across the floor down there. I have it in a order. I think it should work. And all I have to do is put it up. And yes, a lot of people didn't like that I was using a framing hammer, so fine, I'll use a little hammer like this and I'll, I'll have my little dinky finger up like this and you'll dee 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 dee. Here's my hammer, there's the wall, let's get started. good. I've got a lot more nails to put in. I've just tacked in each board in case I had to shift it. Didn't know if it was going to make it to the top correctly, but I think that combination should do. Awesome! Now I know there's going to be a flurry of emails or comments saying, Slim, what the heck are you doing? You can't put wood behind a wood stove. It'll catch on fire and you'll die. I am aware of that. There's more to follow. Believe me. I'm going to give you one last precautionary note about old wood and fungus. This particular piece still has black mold right here. And although I've killed it with vinegar, I haven't removed the spores. It's the spores that are the issues because people have allergies to them. You got to get them out of the air and out of the surface of the wood. So I'm going to take this outside, scrub it down again, and make sure I dust it off. If I had to do it inside, however, you're going to have to wear a mask, and you're going to have to use a vacuum cleaner that has a HEPA filter. That way, you're not just transferring the spores from the wood and into the air. Now, not all fungus is bad, especially when it's outside, because there's all kinds of fungus out there that's actually fun. In October, two unique kinds of mushrooms poke up through the leaves here. The first is the shaggy mane, which is easy to identify 
and is great fried with a little butter. They appear suddenly overnight and must be picked and cooked before the gills open up and it turns to black goo. But the popularity contest goes to this mushroom, the stinkhorn. Not something I want on my dinner plate, as its attraction is not to humans, but to flies. Watch as I speed up the camera as a swarm of them arrives. They go absolutely nutso trying to get a lick of this smelly fungi. I bet you thought it was that other stinky stuff that attracts the most flies, right? Well, that's now number two on the list. Ever been annoyed by a fly? It's time I annoyed them back. I think that's enough about flies and stink. It's time to discuss costs for the renovations in this video. So all the wood that I put on the walls was salvaged so it didn't cost me a cent. But it did cost me $13.78 for nails. Although I did manage to salvage some of the old insulation, I still had to pay an additional $144.74 for some new stuff. I also needed a new vapor barrier at $41.71 and staples at $5.73. That makes the total for this video only at $205.53 Canadian or about $150 US dollars and the to date costs of $13,305 Canadian or $10,250 US dollars. Now there's one other critter that makes me think fall. The area around my cabin is the stomping grounds to about 20 wild turkeys. Although some eyes only see these as food, I turn this around and I feed them instead. My way of giving back to nature. Wild turkeys. Not very wild right now, pretty tame. So you see the difference just a few old barn boards can do? This is starting to warm up. My cabin is actually starting to get a little character. And although it's getting really cold outside, it's going to be warming up inside. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my others as well. I'm going to end off with my first decoration. If you'd like a notice for my next video, please hit the subscribe button. Bye for now.